Good day, Grade 10s. In today's lesson, we're going to be introducing you to a new function, a new graph, and that is the parabola. The best way to get a feel for the parabola is to draw it. So what we're going to be doing is, in this case, we're just going to be looking at plotting some point and drawing it. And with that, then you'll be able to see what happens when we do different things to the parabola. So, we've got y is equal to x squared. So if you ever see anything with x squared, it is generally a parabola, especially at this level, grade 10 level. So what we're going to be doing is substituting in points, just like we did with a straight line. We're going to be substituting in points, like for example, we're going to substitute minus 2 into your x squared and get different y's. We're going to plot it and see what shape it gives us. So minus 2 goes into x squared, so minus 2 squared is 4. Minus 1 squared is just 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is 4. So do you see that it forms a nice type of um, mirror image? So let's plot that. So if we plot that, and I must admit I'm really bad at drawing graphs when I'm using a sketchpad, so I'm going to try very hard. So x is minus 2 and y is 4 is there x is minus 1 and y is 1 is over here and then it's 0 and then if x is 1 y is 1 is over here and if x is what is it 2 and y is 4 it's over here and now what we need to do is join oh this is terrible join the dots it's not supposed to be as pointy as that I apologize, always rough. Okay, so that is your first parabola, which is y equals x squared. Now, because there isn't much space on that graph, I'm actually going to change colors so that you can see what happens. Now, we've got y is equal to 2 times x squared. So, what are we doing? We're doubling whatever that value is. So, just to check, minus 2 squared is 4 times by 2 is 8. Minus 1 squared is 1 times by 2 is 2. So do you see 2 times 0 is just 0. And then again, we've got 2 and 8. So now if I plot these points, you've got x is minus 2, y is 8. x is minus 1, y is 2, 0, 1 and then finally 8 and if I try and draw that we okay so what did you see you saw that actually what can you see you can see that this parabola is actually steeper has a steeper gradient than that parabola okay it's thinner and it's pointier and it's steeper Let's have a look. Let's get another ink color. Let's get the little nylicky purple I like so much. And let's try again. Now this time, what are we doing? We're halving whatever the x squared was. So in this case, let's just check though. Minus 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2. Half of 1 is a half. Half of 0 is just a half. And then we've got 1 half and 2. So if I plot this, it's going to be a little bit tricky to plot because this gradient graph is so small, but let's try anyway. So x is again minus 2, y is a half, and then it's, oh sorry, my bad. If x is minus 2, let me just erase that point, otherwise it's going to be very confusing. Okay, there we go. Get back to that in color. So if x is minus 2, y is 2 is better. If x is minus 1, y is a half. If x is again a half and then 2 goes to 2. So if I draw that again, do you see what happens? So the bigger the number is in front of the x squared, the bigger the coefficient, the steeper the graph. So we can actually write that. The bigger the coefficient, which is the number in front, coefficient, okay, the bigger the coefficient, the steeper the graph. In other words, what are we saying? We're saying it's got a greater gradient, therefore we're saying it's got an increased gradient.
gradient. Okay, so we can see that by y is equal to x squared is your basic formula for your parabola. It gives you this nice little shape. Okay, and then what happens when we increase and decrease? The bigger it is, the steeper. Okay, right, let's look at something else now. Let's look at what happens if I add or subtract something to it. Okay, so again, let's just do this by plotting so we can get an idea of what happens to a parabola when we do different things to it. So again, minus 2 squared is 4, minus 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, 4. Now we're adding 1 to this. We're adding 1. So, Minus 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. So what are we really doing? We're just adding 1 to whatever that value is. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 1. And 4 plus 1 is 5. I actually really should be doing that in a different color. Let me do that in a different color so you don't get confused. So let's do that again that in red. So what did I say? It was 5, 2, 1, 2, 5. And now let's do our third one in a different color again. We'll draw them all at once, okay? So what have we got? We've got, again, now we're subtracting. Yeah, we added one. Now we're subtracting 3, okay? So we got minus 2 squared is 4, minus 3 is 1. So what are we doing? We're really just subtracting 3 from that value there. So 1 minus 3 is minus 2. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. 1 minus 3 again is minus 2. And 4 minus 3 is just 1. Okay, so let's draw these graphs and let's start at the bottom one since I've got that color out. Okay, so let's plot this. So we're going to use our ordered pairs. Remember we spoke about ordered pairs. So the ordered pair is minus 2 and 1. So it's minus 2 and 1. It is minus 1, minus 2. So it is minus 1, minus 2. 0, minus 3. 0, minus 3 and then a mirror image. Okay. So now our graph does something different. Do you see that the graph actually goes below the x-axis? I'm getting better at drawing these parabolas. Okay, right. Now let's see what happens if it's x squared plus 1. Let's plot these points. So it becomes x is minus 2, 5. So it becomes minus 2, 5. And then it becomes minus 1, 2, and it's not 1. Then it is, again, a mirror image of 2 and 2 and 5. And now do you see this graph? Ooh. Okay. The graph is now a Above the x-axis, it's not actually touching the x-axis. Let's do your final one, which is our reference one, the one that we're actually using as a reference to compare everything to. So if we plot that, x is minus 2 and y is 4. Yes. x is minus 1 and y is 1. Note 1 and 4. And if we draw that, we. Sorry, I told you I always make funny sounds when I'm drawing. Okay, right. So there is your parabola. So what did we notice? We noticed that what does this do? What does that do? It shifts the graphs up and down. So whatever we add or subtract to this actually shifts our graph. So a plus or a minus, and we're going to call this, I don't know, C. Okay, a plus or a minus of a C. What does it do? It shifts the graph up or down. And we can see from this that if we go plus 1, it actually shifts the graph up. So plus shifts it up. And minus, what does it do? It shifts it down. 
Okay, shift it down. See, that's not too bad. Hey, so what have we learned? We're going to do one more thing before we carry on, or a couple more things just before we, we carry on and find our general equation. Let's see what happens if I change this from a positive to a negative. So I'm going to quickly just do these points. It becomes 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So if we do this, x is minus 2, 1 is 4, x is minus 1, y is 1. And if you're wondering why I did that so quickly, well, we've done it in the last two sides. So I'm pretty sure you now know how to get a base parabola, the one we're comparing everything to. Okay, now let's look at what happens when, mm, no, wrong kind of thing, sorry, when we put a minus in front of our x squared. So if we put a minus in front, what does this become? It becomes minus 2 squared times by minus, which becomes minus 4. So what is happening? We're actually just putting a minus, we times in this, by a minus 1. So that becomes minus 1, naught times minus 1, it's just naught. 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, and 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. So if I plot this, we get minus 2, minus 4, minus 1, minus 1, zero and then the mirror image and then okay terrible drawing I'm very sorry but do you get what I'm saying I'm saying that we need oh and one thing grade tens please make sure first of all that your drawings are better than this but please understand it's very difficult to do this on a digital pad secondly you do not do this you do not while you are busy drawing sketch in like that that is bad rather use your eraser because you're going to be drawing these in pencil okay don't do that naughty okay let me just rather try it again so let me rather just try drawing this graph again so you will use an eraser and you will draw it properly and you will just generally why is it not taken there we go and you will just try and generally do a nice smooth curve and with practice you'll get better and another thing you don't do and I'm just going to show you over here is let's say for example you have got points like this you do not go dish 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 no it's got to be a beautiful straight curve like that okay beautiful gentle curve okay so don't just join the dots of the whole bunch of straight lines that's not what a graph looks like in maths or in science for that matter right so let's carry on sorry my bad I got distracted okay so now what did we realize about the minus the minus x squared the minus what does it do it swaps the graph from a positive graph to a negative graph so what does it do it inverses it it inverses it okay it flips it across the x axis across the x axis and you end up with a mirror image okay that is a mirror image in other words if you put a mirror there across here it would give you the same thing right now so what have we learned? We've learned that our standard form is y is equal to ax squared plus q. Okay, where your a affects what? Your a affects your amplitude. In other words, amplitude of your gradient. In other words, how big the gradient is. So the bigger a is, your bigger the a it is, what did we learn? It was the steeper the gradient or the steeper the gradient. Okay, what else have we learnt? We've learnt that if we have a negative A, it flips it, okay, across the x-axis. And then if we talk about Q, Q, our Q moves the graph up or down right remember that if it is a plus q it moves it which way it moves it up and if it's a minus q what does it do it moves it down okay 
So now it says, sketch the graph of f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4. Label all the intercepts and write down the domain and range. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first of all go f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4. So we're going to draw a little graph here. Okay, now just as much in the straight line graph, when you had y equals mx plus c, we knew that if whatever this number was, was a number that it cut the x-axis. In this case, we know that this minus 4 means it cuts the graph at minus 4. So that there is minus 4. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did before. We're going to make sure using a table that we get all the points. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to say, okay, fine, we also want to know, it says label all the intercepts and write down the domain. So we want to know where it cuts the y-axis. In order to find out where it cuts the y-axis, what do we have to do? We have to let y equal naught. Now remember that f of x is the same thing as saying y. So we can say, well, naught is equal to 2x squared minus 4. So therefore we can say, okay, fine, 4 is equal to 2x squared. We're just taking it across. To get rid of the 2, we divide both sides by your 2. So we get x squared is equal to 2. And then you use a calculator, because what do we have to do? We have to find the square root of 2. So if I do this, we go x is equal to the square root of 2. But this is very important. What you guys need to remember is that the square root of a number is always plus or minus the number. In other words, let me explain. If I've got minus 2 times minus 2, what do I get? I get 4. If I go 2 times by 2, I've got 4. Therefore, the square root of 4 is either going to be 2 or it's going to be minus 2. So you need to remember that. It's very important in maths, okay? So what we're really saying is that x is either positive root 2 or it is negative root 2. We don't know which those are yet, okay? So in fact, in this case, it's both. In this case, because it's a parabola, when y is naught, x is equal to 2, and it's equal to minus 2, which is equal to 1.41, which is equal to 1.41 or minus 1.41. So if I had to plot that, we'd have x is naught, and we'd have minus 1.41, and we'd have plus 1.41 and then we just have to join our dots in a parabola type shape right and that's how you would draw a parabola now there are a couple other ways you can do it you can do it like we've been doing where you can draw a table and you can let x equal minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2 but then you still have to do this to find out where it cuts the x-axis now the last thing they want us to know about is they want us to answer them what is the domain and the range. So the domain, remember, is what? It is the x-axis. It is how much this graph stretches across the x-axis. And remember what I said to you. I said this arrow means that this graph carries on forever. So it's going to carry on going left forever and it's going to carry on going right forever. So therefore we can say the domain and let's do it in a different type of notation this time. We're going to go as minus infinity to infinity for x is an element of real values, right? And now let's look at our range. Remember that the range, where is this pen gone? There it is. The range is a g. Okay, the range is a g. And remember what I said to you? The range and a y both have these little hanging down legs and therefore we know that the range is the y. Now these arrows do tell us that this graph is going to keep going up but it's limited because 
the graph only starts at minus 4. At this point here, there is no graph. So anything below minus 4, there is no more graph. So therefore, this time we can say the range is going to include minus 4, but then it's going to carry on to infinity, and then it's going to be y is an element of real values. Right, grade 10, so now you've learnt about parabolas, you've learnt how the coefficient of the x squared affects the gradient, you've learnt what q does, it moves it up and down, and I've shown you how you can work out the intercepts just like you did in the straight line graphs where you just let x equal naught or you let y equal naught and you're done. Please go practice, 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 and then go do the questions at the end of the section. Thank you, grade 10s, have a great day. Thank you.